Good evening. Welcome to the September 6, 2016 meeting of the Milford Planning and Zoning Commission. May I ask you at this time to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. May we please have roll call from left to right. Richard Lutz. Mike Dolan. John Grant. Edward Mead. Scott Marlowe. Tom Nickel. Tom Panzella. Jim Quish. And I'm Anthony Sutton, board chairman, and we're joined this evening by David Sulkis, city planner, and Phyllis Leggett, board clerk. Uh, first on the agenda is uh, executive session regarding Eugenia Dabowski versus Milford Planning and Zoning Board, 214-224 Seaside Avenue. Discussion of pending litigation. Is there a motion to go into executive session? Mr. Panzella, is there a second? Mr. Marlowe. All in favor? Aye. We're in executive session. Mr. Chair? Oh, uh, may I invite Mr. Sulkis and Attorney Woods into executive session with us? Thank you very much. Is there a motion to exit executive session? Uh, Mr. Marlowe in the second, Mr. Panzella. Okay, we are back to the regular meeting and the regular agenda. Uh, next on the uh, agenda is the hazard mitigation update. It's an informational presentation regarding the hazard mitigation committee's role in protecting the life and property of the Milford residents. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Griffith. Hi. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Joe Griffith. Uh, in addition to being the uh, Director of Permitting and Land Use, I'm also a member of the uh, Hazard Mitigation Committee for the City of Milford. Um, and I'm representing the uh, Hazard Mitigation uh, Committee um, tonight to report on the status of our mitigation plan. The purpose of the plan is to outline steps and strategies that Milford can take to mitigate against the loss of life and damage to property during natural disasters. <clears throat> We were very fortunate that Hermine has fizzled, has fizzled out. However, hurricane season is only about halfway done, so we aren't out of the woods yet. It's important to be aware that our region typically experiences the bulk of our storms in the fall. Public outreach is one of the priorities of the plan and the Hazard Mitigation Committee asked to make this brief presentation to the Planning and Zoning uh, Board meeting uh, and its audience to be focused on personal property and development within the city. The Hazard Mitigation Committee would like to take this opportunity to point out a few resources available to residents for learning more about hazard mitigation. The current plan, dated 2013, can be found on the city's website by typing, quote, hazard mitigation, unquote, into the search box on the Milford homepage or on the page for emergency management services. On the Emergency Management Services page, there are a number of links to other important sources of information on preparing for and recovering from a disaster. Residents, residents are encouraged to sign up for Milford Alerts, the city's emergency notification system. Residents can sign up online, by phone, fax, or mail. On the city's website, there is a sign-up page that can be found under the Important Links or Emergency Services page. September is Natural Prepar National Preparedness Month. The theme for this is, quote, don't wait, communicate, make your emergency plan today, unquote. People are encouraged to make an emergency preparedness plan of their own. More information can be found on the emergency services page of the city website. Should a storm or flood impact the city, it is important to remember the National Weather Service slogan, quote, turn around, don't drown. 
Walking or driving through flood water is dangerous and should be avoided. Regarding floods, more than 20 25% of all property owners in the city have land in a flood zone, which covers about one third of the city. Planning and Zoning Department has a number of resources for residences who would like to inquire about the city's flood zones in purchasing flood insurance. They can be reached at 783-3245. In closing, the hazard mitigation plan is available online and the city will be updating the plan again in, in 2018 in conjunction with the South Central Regional Council of Governments. Thank you for the opportunity to share this information. And if there's any questions, I can answer them. But Thank you, Mr. Griffith. Are there any questions for Mr. Griffith as to the presentation? Thank, Thank you very you. much. Just one brief announcement on the agenda. Uh, under new business, item number five was a proposed text regulation change uh, for a change in the zoning regulations, Article 3, Section 3141, Figure 2. Uh, a petition of Kevin Crusaden. That item will be tabled uh, this evening and that will be taken up and put on the agenda for our uh, Tuesday, September 20th meeting. Which brings us to the uh, next uh, item, which is new business, uh, 911 River Street. It's the petition of Jessica Trujillo for site plan review approval to open a restaurant under section 3.21.1.2 located on map 54 block 397, parcel 8, of which Altama LLC is the owner. Good evening, ma'am. Hello. Um, for the last 10 months, me and my family have been working to open up this restaurant. Um, originally, it was the Villa Gourmet, and it did cooking classes, sell gourmet cheeses, and so forth. We want to ultimately change that retail grocery location into a restaurant even though we're not essentially cooking um, we're reheating per se using a um, microwave oven and so far the sign that's outside of the building will remain the same same color just of course with the spelling of our name um, as you know, downtown Milford has absolutely no parking yet, and we will require 26 parking spaces based on our um, 1,900 square feet. About 49 seats will be made available, including, um, that includes employees, yada yada. So we're hoping that this could be done. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Salkis, do you have comment on the application? Uh, just for a clarification in my report to you, uh, the, the agenda has the correct number of um, what they're applying under, which is section uh, 321.1.2. In the report to you, there seems to be a typo. It says 0.3, but I just wanted to point out that it does, it should say 0.2. Uh, and the only comment I have uh, is, uh, it's a restaurant, uh, they, uh, in their statement of use, they will not be selling alcohol. Uh, the space is too small to qualify to uh, sell any alcohol. Uh, and uh, as was uh, told to you, uh, you need to make a finding of uh, parking adequacy under section 3.21, 3.5, uh, because it is downtown, uh, and it's, uh, as you know, it's a fairly standard practice uh, to grant uh, this uh, type of uh, parking request for downtown. Thank you. Uh, does the board have any questions for Mr. Salkas at this time? Does the board have any questions for the petitioner at this time? Mr. Quish. Uh, would you be allowed to bring your own um, alcoholic beverage into the restaurant? Um, we were trying to think about that. Um, as a Mexican restaurant, when people go in there, they say, you know, I want margaritas, I want mojitos, but we also want an environment that's good for everybody. You know, as of downtown Milford, you have uh, the Stonebridge area. It's kind of rowdy between Friday and Saturday night. So this type of restaurant that we're going to have is for basically families. It's a nice restaurant with a good ethnic background, a Latin feel, good food. We do want to do, we're thinking about BYOB. You know, bring your own beer and wine like the Italian restaurant that 
that's there. Um, they do very well. Uh, I know they've been in business for a while, so if we have to ask for advice, we would go to them because we have to hand, you know, have a hand in this as well. Um, but as for liquor, uh, we really want that. It's 45% of your revenue. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's pretty good. We want that really bad. We do. I mean, we live in Milford, you know, and you we know wanted <laughs> to open up a restaurant in Milford because we live here and we thought it would be the best thing to do. And, well, 10 months has been <laughs> a little of a struggle, but if possible, we want, we, I mean, we're new to this. If, I mean, you guys know all the laws and regulations. If you guys know how we can do that, we would definitely apply for it. I mean, we tried having a bar, but I guess we can't. We're too small. I, I don't know. I, I really want your opinion. I. So we see a lot of restaurants around yeah. that we thought are, you know, fairly small as well. And they have, you know, there's, they have alcohol, but we technically don't need it. We're out of a space right now that's 320 square feet. We've done so well here that we want to give somebody, we want to give the town of Milford a piece of Mexico in yeah. Milford. And I believe what we've done there physically with our hands, um, with paint, we've turned this place into Mexico. Yeah. And we want to give that culture to everybody in Milford. Um, we work very hard. We're very hardworking people, and we want to show everyone what we can do. I mean, we're not nothing fancy, of course, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, downtown Milford, that, that's pretty much all it is. I mean, $20 plates, and we, we want to cater to people that can't really afford that $20 plate. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we really want this. Thank you. Are there further questions from the board for the petitioner? Mr. Panzella. You say a lot of the, uh, the, food, the food and everything that comes in is going to be uh, frozen. I don't see a, a walk-in or I don't see any type of refrigeration on your, uh, on your floor plan. Could you show me where it is? Yes. If you look at your equipment list and you see um, number nine. Okay. It's only called out number nine. There's no, uh, hmm? there's no designation. Okay. Um, no. On the equipment list, there is a number for refrigeration. And that is located in the kitchen on your floor plan, and it's a yellow colored. Okay, because that says refrigerator. It doesn't say freezer. Yeah. It's refrigeration, yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty small. I mean, if you're going to be doing a lot, I mean, it looks inadequate. I don't know. I mean, well, it's, you should know your business better than I, but it looks kind of small. Well, when we checked with the health department, he did a, um, ooh, I forgot. Paul Schultz. Are you sure? All Paul right. Schultz. When we checked with um, Paul Schultz, the sanitarian Schultz, he did the mathematical. He showed us what the cubic feet that we yeah. needed. We have literally a, a ten and a half foot fridge. So with the products that we're going to have, it's it's definitely going to fit the capacity of people that we're going to have in this building on a daily basis. Could you talk talk into the microphone, please, okay. sir? Yeah, we have. <clears throat> We have the available space. When we talked to Paul Schultz, he said we needed enough, uh, you know, um, refrigeration cubic feet, and that's what we did. We have uh, an eight and a half foot to ten foot refrigeration unit, and that will fill the 49 capacity per day. Not a problem with the food that we have that's already pre-made, pre-existing. We're going to have that. We're going to fill that spot. How often do you get deliveries? Pretty much daily, depending. I mean, the food that we have is frozen. I mean, if you look at things like Dunkin' Donuts and Subway, their food is delivered daily and it's frozen and it's just thought out. Mm -hmm. Or it's, um, you know, delivered in a format where all you have to do is just reheat it. I mean, we have the experience. We have use the same refrigeration in the Dunkin' Donuts at 100 Holly Lane and Trumbull, and it works. I mean, we know the ins and outs of this um, type of equipment and how much refrigeration we would need to be able to meet those seats. Does the food come from a single source, or do you use multiple vendors? It's multiple vendors. So on different days, you'll have different vendors coming? Um, yeah. I mean, some of them are drivable distance, and we can drive up there. Uh, Restaurant Depot is actually a couple miles away, and it doesn't really require much. Yeah. That's usually our go-to spot because 
That's usually our go-to spot because we actually do the meats by hand. We marinate everything by hand. So if we have to go to Restaurant Depot and get certain meats, we make them by ourselves. So um, let's say we go into this building because this is what we want to do. And we're in this building. We're going to be able to see the busier days, the slower days. So then we're going to be able to work on should we do our deliveries Monday and Thursday? So that'll be twice a week. Usually that is what Dunkin' Donuts does, is they do it twice a week, with a 24-hour notice time when you, um, when you mark down the food that you need. So when we're at this building, we're gonna see our busier days, and we're gonna see when we can deliver, and you know, that's basically what we do now, and we're doing very well. Uh, if it helps the board, the, uh, in the uh, staff report to you, you'll notice that uh, under the health department line, uh, there's a letter uh, with a, a condition. So we received a letter from the uh, health department basically saying, you know, they have no issue uh, with this application moving forward uh, through uh, this board. But in the end, even uh, with uh, board approval and building department approval, in the end, uh, the applicant still has to get approval for their plan uh, from the health department. So the issues of refrigeration and any of those issues will be, uh, I believe, dealt with at that time. Are there additional questions for the petitioner? Yes, yes I have some questions. Mr. Lutz. Um, you're going to be right next door to another Mexican restaurant, am I, am I correct? Uh, tapas. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, He's talking about the Latin bar. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but I mean, their food is completely different. You know, he buys his from a distributor. We're Mexican. We know the real food. You know, we know the real chorizo. We know all these things. You know, his distributors were distributors that came to us, and it's going to be completely different. You're not associated with that restaurant no. at all? No. I thought that that was one restaurant, and they just added another one right next to it. Am I correct? Yes, we're located right next to Bistro Basque. Right. Our current location is a tiny little corner next to Cafe El Antique, and we want to grow. Ah, okay. Now I understand it. Okay, <laughs> you're you're not you're now where the the shoe shop used to be. Yep, the it shoe shop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, is that restaurant going to stay there as well as the is the new one? Momentarily, it will stay there. Momentarily. Momentarily. Okay, and, and so that, um, are this, you're not part of a chain, this is just your, your no, own doing? No, we're not a chain. We're Family. not going to open up any chain. It's okay. just us. Okay. Are there additional questions for the petitioner uh, from, uh, from the board? Uh, seeing none, uh, I'll make a motion, or, uh, Mr. Quish, I'll recognize Mr. Quish. Oh, no, I'd like to make a motion to approve and as presented. And would that be with the conditions as uh, outlined in the report from staff? Well, with the health department, that's automatic. They, they have the final word to let them open, so. Okay. Very good. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Second. Panzella. Does anyone wish to be heard on the motion? Mr. Quish. Oh, I just want to wish him great luck. I think it's a great thing, and I wish you the best success. Thank, Thank, you. You. <laughs> Thank you. Any Thank further you. discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll call the question to a vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next item of business uh, is a public hearing, 103 Point Beach Drive, the petition of Mark Pucci for approval of a special permit to construct an in-ground swimming pool within 25 feet of high tide on Map 30, Block 642, Parcel 1, of which Dr. Hoos is the owner. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Board. I'm Mark Pusey, and I'm here on behalf of Dr. Hoos. Uh, we're presently constructing a single-family home at 103 Point Beach Drive. We, we were in front of the Board uh, just about 18 months ago for a special permit to construct a new home. We're, uh, we're just about finished, and uh, Dr. Hoos asked, asked me to uh, apply for another permit for an in-ground swimming pool. So we, had, we have contracted a pool company, Sharper Image Pools, from Monroe, and they have provided us with a site plan and an engineer drawing of an in-ground pool, and we, we're, we're here to seek approval for this swimming pool. 
There were some concerns or some questions by the city engineer, which I believe we've, we've addressed. And if there's any questions from the board, um, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Pusey. Mr. Sulkis, do you have comment on the application? Uh, I have a question. Uh, it would probably be helpful, uh, Mr. Pusey, if you could uh, uh, elaborate about uh, just exactly where the fence is, uh, where the uh, pool mechanical equipment is, and uh, if there's any engineering that's involved with the swimming pool uh, being in such close proximity to the seawall. Sure. The pool equipment will be located on the first floor deck, which is at elevation 22. The first floor elevation is at uh, elevation 20, so it's just about two feet above on the first deck facing the water. That's where the pool equipment's going to be. Uh, there currently is a six-foot fence from uh, Point Beach Drive all the way to, uh, it, it abuts a, a seawall with each neighbor to the left and right of the property. The seawall is approximately three feet tall. Is that that's a currently existing fence? It's existing. Yeah, all, okay. all this is existing. So um, if, if the board approves this permit, the, the pool company will uh, obtain the building permit from the, from the building department, and I believe the building department will dictate exactly where the fence has to go for, you know, for, the, for the safety reasons, the pool fence. So the, so the fence can extend either f um, on, on the wall, I believe, it, it, an additional foot on top of the seawall will, will meet the pool code. Uh, if it's not tall enough or if, it's not, if the fence isn't permitted on top of the seawall, we can go from uh, the house towards the seawall that faces the Long Island Sound just to surround the pool. I don't believe a fence is required uh, from the seawall down to there's about a five foot drop to the water. I don't think you know, it would be required to put a fence on the wall facing the water, but whatever the, the building department requires will certainly comply. Do you have anything further, Mr. Selkis? Not at this time. Does the board have any questions for the petitioner? Yes. Mr. Lutz. Um, when you say that this was engineered, do you, you know, during storms, those seawalls get pounded. Do you have a certified engineer stating that by putting this pool where it is, that we're not going to weaken the seawall? Well, we're, I, I believe we're far enough away from the seawall where we're not going to uh, uh, undermine the seawall. We had to excavate the whole property before the construction. There was an existing house on the property that was demolished. We had to take away um, uh, almost the whole entire lot was covered with concrete. That was all removed. It was all backfilled with clean fill and sand. Uh, and I believe we're far enough away from the wall where we're not, we're, it's not going to really affect the wall, undermining the wall. In, uh, well, you, when you say far enough away, according to the uh, according to your plan, you're five feet away. Am I correct? Correct. And you're saying that w what kind of pool is this? Is it going to be a, a fiber or I mean, a, 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 what kind of line? Is it a liner pool? Yes, or? liner pool, vinyl liner. Yep. Okay, so liner pools don't have much stability on the sides, right? No, there's nothing there. There's no cement. There's nothing behind no that. No cement, no. no so it's a metal, metal frame. It's built with a metal frame, and then there's a line. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a pool installer, but um, from what I read through the plans and specs, it's, it's, they're framed with metal, like a, you know, aluminum studs. All right. Now, this area floods all the time, right? In other words, we, we have uh, your house is up on piers, right? Yes. Yeah. So when this floods, and the water goes over the seawall into the pool, okay, what happens then? Well, since it's a pool, it's gonna, it's gonna fill with water regardless. I don't, I don't know if it matters, but water in the pool. I mean. Yeah. You know, you're, you're saying that, are, are you an engineer, Mr. Pucci? No. No, okay. So in other words, we don't know from an engineering position if having this pool five feet away from the seawall is in any way compromising the seawall. We don't have an engineer's position on that. We do not. Thank you. Are there additional questions for the petitioner at this time? Mr. Nickel. 
Has this been uh, brought up before the uh, sewer department as far as uh, your disposal of your water that's in the pool? Where is that going to go when you drain your pool? Uh, the, these types of pools do not drain according to the pool company. You, you don't drain them. Um, if you have a storm, so you're going to tell me that you're going to accept the seawater with regular water in the pool, you're not going to drain it? No, sir. It, it's actually a saltwater pool. Saltwater pool. Yes, sir. If the dirty sound water gets in there, you're not going to drain it? No, it does not. You don't drain this type of pool. So the sewer department uh, has approved this? Uh, I, I don't I don't believe that the sewer department, I, I believe that the, the, the special permit is the first step and the pool company would have to obtain a building permit, which you know, may require a, a sewer sign off, but this is just for the special permit. And what about the health department? Uh, the, the health department was also uh, given this, the same application that I submitted to the board. And they have approved no, it? No, well, well, they haven't approved anything. It's, it's up to the board to approve the special permit. There were no comments by the health department. There were comments by the engineering department, which we've, uh, we've, we've addressed. Okay, this is going to be uh, uh, right to the guidelines of the state building code barrier, which uh, provides for uh, entrapment protection. I'm sorry, is that a question? Or? The state building code, there is an entrapment protection code there that says when you're draining that thing, someone doesn't get sucked into it. Well, like, a, like a backflow preventer? Well, sir, the, the, um, the, the pool company, uh, you know, assuming we get an approval, will we'll obtain all the permits necessary through the city. Thank you. Any other questions for the petitioner at this time? Mr. Panzella. One, uh, one quick question. Uh, on the concrete walkway, is it going to be concrete or something around it, or is it going to be uh, flagstone, or is it going to be gravel? What's going to be around it? And if so, do you have any steel outriggers or anything to support that concrete once it's, uh, once it's poured? Uh, there, there won't be any concrete around the pool area. Yes. Additional questions for the petitioner? Yes. Mr. Lutz. I live near there, okay? In the last storm, everything was covered with about three inches of mud, uh, you know, after the, after the storm, okay? And all, that mud was, was, was toxic, okay? I don't understand how, if, it, if you had that same condition, and, you know, all this mud went into the pool, how you wouldn't drain the pool? Well, there is a, there is a cover that retractable cover that state that that comes with the pool so I'm assuming the the owner would keep the pool cover on in the event of a storm and there's also several homes on the uh, on Point Beach Red that have ingrown pools you know this isn't the only one are there further questions for the petitioner uh, seeing none, uh, we can open up uh, for public comment. Uh, is there anyone here that wishes to be heard uh, either in favor or in opposition to the, uh, to the application? Uh, seeing none, I will just uh, uh, note for the record, is that Mr. Sulkis, if I can just note for the record, uh, we have received uh, uh, an email uh, from a neighbor, Mr. Alan Caden, um, regarding this application uh, which has been distributed to the board and he raises questions as to face fence placement placement of pools mechanical equipment uh, coastal management report and engineer approval for construction of pool uh, the board has that and uh, can use that in reaching its decision uh, seeing no one else that wishes to speak or present any testimony or evidence in favor or opposition I believe at this time we'll close the public hearing unless anyone thinks that we should not. Uh, we can close the public hearing then. Does anyone wish to make a motion relative to this petition at this time? Mr. Quish. Yes, I would like to make a motion to approve the, the pool as presented. I think that the uh, 
chlorine issue has been addressed because it's a saltwater pool and the cover addresses general uh, precaution against mud. And if it's a flood, you muck out your house or your yard or your pool, whatever you have to do. I mean, if they want a pool, I think it's fine. They should have, be able to have a pool. Is there a second to the motion? Mr. Dolan. Does anyone wish to be heard on the motion? Yes. Mr. Uh, Lutz. I'd like to see uh, an engineering report that would tell us that this, is, 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 this pool is going to be in a, uh, uh, you know, is going to not compromise somehow the seawall. Uh, I don't have any, you know, if in fact we have an engineering report saying that, I don't have any problem with it. But without an engineering report, uh, I just don't know if I can, I can go with this one. Does anyone else uh, wish to be heard of the motion? Mr. Quish. Yeah, no, and I, I, I respect that opinion, and I think that um, our position here is whether to permit, to permit the pool being built, and it's up to the building department to view construction documents to see that it's engineered properly. I think our role is to, um, at a different level, approve the concept of a pool and let the building department do their job making sure that it's engineered properly. Does anyone else wish to be heard on the motion? Seeing none, we'll call the question to vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. All opposed? The, the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, board. Next on our agenda this evening are liaison reports. Uh, do any board members have liaison reports? Seeing none, we'll move on to the regulation subcommittee for an update. Mr. Grant. Nothing at this time. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes for our August 16, 2016 meeting. Does anyone wish to make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Mr. Grant, is there a second? Mr. Panzella, any discussion? All in favor? Okay. The motion passes and the minutes are approved. Next item is the chair's report. My only item this evening is that uh, uh, Mr. Salkis uh, provided me with a lot line adjustment and I signed the mylar on that for 109 Beachland Avenue. And that is the, uh, the sum and substance of my report this evening. Mr. Salkis, do you have a staff report this evening? Not this evening. That brings us to the end of the agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to Mr. adjourn. Mr. Panzella, is there a second? Mr. Grant, all in favor? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.